that <laughs> that is not going anywhere. Well, friends, I am constantly having things ripped out of my hands at the drill press. It's pretty dangerous. I've been hurt a few times because of it, and I need a solution. And that solution is a magnetic table. So after scrapping five different microwaves, I finally found two transformers that are exactly the same. They're OBJY2s, both of them. They're exactly the same size, exactly the same shape. If you notice right here, there's a, there's a weld on both sides and there's a seam there. Uh, you grind that weld off and this whole cap will come off. Then we'll press the coils out, toss the secondary winding, reinstall the primary winding, and this will become an electromagnet. Okay, so there's our primary winding. We want to save that. This is our secondary. We, do, we don't need that. And my arrangement was not enough to force it all the way off, so we'll just give it a few whacks, and it should come free. There we go. Then if you save copper, you should recycle that. All right, so I found a power supply here, and uh, this one is a... Uh, 19 and a half volt at 11.8 amp output. That should do fine. The first thing we'll do is we'll find out which wire puts out what voltage. All right. So the black and the white is my 18 volts. Alright, so that's a good five or six feet of cable on there, which is more than I need, but uh, good to have some options, right? What if I want to use the table off the drill press? Alright, so here's the light switch for the drill press, and up inside there is just a regular light socket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this adapter, and I'm going to plug in this exterior light, and plug in my power supply to this and then actually put another light bulb in this so I get even more light. So when I turn the switch on, it'll turn on both lights and the power supply, which will energize the magnet. Okay, so there's, there's my mount. The power is coming out. When the lights go on, the power comes on. So now I've got my 18 volt power source right there, and I can plug that into the electromagnetic table. This is gonna go on top of the drill press table we're going to want a place where the drill bit can pass through, and that's just going to be this plastic tube. We'll put that right there, and we'll set this together. We're going to build a frame around it. Okay, so I've got this piece of sheet metal here, and I've got an outline laid out. What we'll do is we'll cut that out, and then we'll use this two-inch strap to make a wall around it, weld it all together. So I measured the pieces for the side walls and laid out the cut marks and then I went to the bandsaw and cut them out. Then I drilled a hole for my power connection and set up to weld it all together. Then I welded it up and went ahead and ground the welds back down, not to hide the welds but mainly so it'll sit flat on the table. And I know my transformers are too tall, so I sat them in the pan and used the sidewall as a guide to mark them. I'll come back and cut those with the bandsaw. 
And I know I want those iron cores of the transformers welded into the pan because no matter how strong the magnet is, it's not going to be much good if it breaks loose from its mounting. And the final bit of welding is to weld some 3 16th thick steel tabs onto the pan. And that will be the interface to the T-slots in my drill press table. Okay, now let's take a look at these two primary windings. Uh, they, they're the same gauge wire, but take a look. The, uh, the winding on this is clockwise from the inside, and this one is anti-clockwise from the inside. And I fear if I wire them in parallel, that's going to generate polar opposite magnetic fields, and I don't want that. So I think I'll wire them in parallel, except I'll wire one the opposite polarity. And then we'll just test that out and see how it works. Okay, on this side I've got the negative on the inside start of the winding, so on this one I want to put the positive on the inside start of the winding. This is something you always want to do first. Is uh, any, any hardware that's supposed to be on the inside, make sure it's on before you solder the wires. Got a nice rubber o-ring there to seal it on the inside. And finger tight's plenty good enough on that because this thing's getting filled up with epoxy. So I don't want those copper windings to touch the steel, so I'm putting some parchment paper in between them. Using parchment paper because it can withstand Lots and lots of heat. Not that I expect this to ever really get hot. Now we can test it. All right, let's power it up. Didn't smoke, that's good. And it's not working. Now watch when I turn it on. Pulled that down. So what's happening is that power supply is shutting down the moment it senses a load. I think my wiring in there is pretty good. I'm just going to have to come up with a different power supply arrangement. Let me see what I got laying around. Well this here is a 15 volt lambda. Let's see if it works. This is a really nice power supply. Well that's working. And that's got a decent amount of magnetism, but it's acting like a buzzer because it's not flat. Okay, well that's a good enough proof of concept that I'm willing to go ahead and pour the potting compound. So let's do that. And I grossly underestimated the amount of epoxy it was going to take to fill this up. The amount that's in there is only about one third of what it's going to take. So I better order two more packs. So I built up some weld around this because I want it to be a square head and now we'll just grind it down on the grinder. Now those fit the T-slots in my drill press table perfectly. Back to the epoxy fill. We'll uh, mix up another batch and get this thing topped off. Except... It's still not enough. To get this final layer of epoxy on, we want to put a curve around the edge. And we'll just use some masking tape for that. Then we'll fill that up right to the edge. Okay, now I know I don't need all of this. So I'm going to just pour half of it. And I know the ratio is two parts of this to one part of that. So we're going to use this scale to, to measure some out. Five ounces looks like about half of it. Hopefully that's enough. One thing you want to do when you're mixing epoxy is you always want to scrape the sides and the bottom while you're mixing. But then you don't want to scrape the sides and the bottom while you're pouring.
Now I'm not sure you can tell, but the the epoxy is crowning just above the top edge of that. Got a couple air bubbles in there. Come in with a torch. Get those out. Now we'll let that cure and then flatten off the top. Here we are at the last phase, and that is to mill this flat. Now I have a milling machine. But if you've been around the channel any time at all, you know that I like to employ methods that almost anybody could do. So we're not going to use the milling machine. We're going to use this, my homebrew surface planer. It's just a moving dolly with a U-bolt clamping an angle grinder onto it. See, it's nice and flat there. So we're going to put the electromagnet on the welding table and prop it up with these thin strips of wood. We'll take a pass, then we'll put another strip of wood in there. And see, that was the high spot. It took that right down. Now we'll put another block of wood under there and take another pass. Now this is a much larger bite than the last one, so it started to shift around. I decided to clamp it in place with some long reach C-clamps. Now this piece of sheet metal is about half the thickness of that wood, because I didn't want to take a, another big bite like that. Okay, it's looking pretty flat. Yeah, that is looking good. Now what I want to do is come in here with the belt sander and just smooth it off to take those swirl marks out. Now we'll just wipe that down with a little WD so it doesn't rust. That other power supply was 12 volts at 6 amps. This one is 5 volts at 25 amps. This one works a lot better. So I decided to go with it, and this is the way I mounted it. It's mounted on the side of the motor mount. The power wire goes up there and plugs into the side of that light bulb adapter. When you turn on the light bulb, it powers up the power supply. Now these locking nuts, a quarter turn loosens them enough to, that you can move the whole unit. And then here's the power. Let's hook it up and see what happens. That, <laughs> that is not going anywhere. All right, well that is a success. So the other power supply, which was 12 volts at 6 amps, didn't generate anywhere near as much magnetism as 5 volts at 25 amps. So I'm going to continue to look around for another power supply. I'm thinking about getting up around 50 volts at 50 amps. At 5 volts at 25 amps, I'm, I am able to break the piece free by hand. It holds pretty well, but I think I can do better. And if you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. Anyway, that's all for this time. I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.